Good evening. It's a serious video, but uh, first let me show you who I'm hanging out with today because it's a guy that had a question for me. He had an injury, and he knows that I just recently had this slab tear in my shoulder, fairly recently. And he knows that I was able to retain a lot of size. I look small now because my head's closer to the camera than my body. But uh, he's complaining that he lost a lot of his gains, right? I told him he doesn't look that bad. There he is. So we're just sitting here having this conversation. about bodybuilding and muscle gain primarily how to maintain and retain your gains in the face of an injury so yeah I'm smoking one of my small cigars but I'm not actually drinking he is you're drinking this shit I don't know if you can see that. And me, myself, I don't really mess with this. But what I want to say to you guys is it's serious, so uh, this really isn't a giant, this is a genuine video. I look weird in here, and body doesn't even look like it's my right head on it. Odd. I don't know. Anyhow, whole thing is, say you got to stop training because of an injury for months. Maybe it's going to be a pretty good while. You're not going to be able to train. So what can you do to keep your size up and make it easier for you to regain your former status when you start to resume training again? All right, is there a way to do that? And if there is, will I share it with you? And if I do, will you believe it? A lot of unknowns. But the answer is, yeah, there's a way, and yeah, I'm going to tell you. And uh, you may not believe it, but if you get in a situation, you'll remember I told you, or you'll reference this. And maybe you'll try it, and then you'll find out it's true. Here's the deal. I've told you again and again and again that your body doesn't really care if it's fat or muscular. It only knows the load that you're carrying on your skeleton. Ask him. He knows all about that shit. You know what he used to weigh? He used to be a big mofo. Now, I'm not going to say his name. Put him out there like I can tell you who he is because you all know who he is. You just ain't seen him for a while. Maybe he thought he retired, but he's planning to come back. Anyway. If you get an injury and you can't train, and you want to keep your size up, and you want it to be easy for when you come back, now, if you're going to be off, I don't know, if you're going to be off for years, this is probably not the way to go. But, because uh, it just is what it is at that point. But pretty much, I mean, it depends. It's still, maybe it'll work. But it just worked for me, and I was off eight months, close to eight months. Several of those months, this arm was immobilized in a sling. And here's what happened. While this arm was in the sling, it got smaller. It atrophied more then the right arm, which was not in the sling, that I was still just using in normal use. Not lifting weights, normal use. They both atrophied, but even this one, with no stimulation, it held in the sling, immobile, not even being able to pick things up, move things around, do the normal things that it does in the course of the day, it actually lost more size than this one. So there was a really hell of an imbalance there. I was small and imbalanced, but pretty much here's what I did. When uh, I knew I was going to be out of training for a while, 
Wasn't on anything, no TRT shit, no nothing. And I'll tell you why, because high levels of testosterone, um, I don't know if it's, I can't say that it has any bearing on natural production or not. I don't know if a guy that like produces a lot of tests would be more prone to this problem in these circumstances as opposed to a guy that produces lesser tests naturally, don't know. But I do know that if you are augmenting your testosterone, right, you will bleed more than if you're not augmenting. And I'm pretty sure that that has to do with the additional, you know, the blood plasma level, the additional red blood cells generated from the testosterone. That's what it does. So that's why, like, if you're going to have a surgery or any kind of thing like that, anything where you're going to bleed, you want to make sure that your doctors know that you're on TRT or if you're, you know, hardcore going for it and you're on some gear, some serious gear, you need to let them know that. And, I, and I'll bet you, I ain't never heard of any other thing, I'll bet you that your doctor's going to say, whoa, you got to be off for X amount of time before we can even do it. Because they don't want to have to deal with that shit. They don't want you on that shit while they're working on you. Now, if you get hit by a train or some shit and they got to save your life, it is what it is. But if it's something that's planned out and scheduled, they're going to want you off all that. So me, knowing that, I'm all, I don't know what's going to happen. So immediately, first thing I do is stop. Anytime I have any kind of serious problem or I don't know what's going on, I think it's a medical issue, when those times have occurred, it can be completely unrelated to anything to do with lifting weights or any other thing. But first thing I do, I stop all that shit. Because I don't want a whole bunch of confusion in there if they're trying to figure out what the hell's going on. You know what I mean? I don't want different levels to be, you know, I want them to be able to say this should be that, this should be that. You know, and that, you know, it's not always the case that it's going to be helpful because it takes so long to work itself out. But I knew I was going to have surgery immediately, but I thought it might be in the near future. So I stopped immediately. So I was off for all of those, every bit of that seven months, I was actually off longer than that. Because at the end of seven months when I came back, I didn't look that bad. And I was so motivated by that, I said, you know what? I'm going to try it naturally for a little while at this stage and see where I'm at. Because I can't believe how big I am without it. So the couple first couple months I started back, I didn't do anything. Nothing. Not even any TRT. Didn't resume it. I felt great. Looked fine. And the only reason I resumed it at all, even at TRT, was just to give this shoulder a little bit of additional help to try and heal it. So I figured it might promote a little more healing in the shoulder, which I'm sure it does, and it did. So that's the only reason I even resumed it, because I didn't look at bad. Uh, it's all documented in the videos. You see me with the sling on my arm in a video. If you'll watch that video about shoulder dislocation, you'll see that spliced into that is the night I dislocated. Well, I didn't dislocate it. I thought this would happen. Is the night I injured it, and you'll see the injury, and you'll see the first aid, which actually just did it more harm, that I tried to render with it with Val helping me. But anyway, so that's an interesting video if you haven't seen it. If you just look at, you know, what you see at the cover of the video, don't be fooled. The video, you know, is, uh, it, it cuts over into what happened initially, how I did it, because uh, the first thing I did was put it on camera as I was trying to, what I thought, put it back in socket. It, it's a mess. But anyhow, so I was off all that time. Now, I didn't even know if I was going to be able to lift again. So I, it didn't bother me, you know, stop the test. And uh, I knew that I wanted to keep the calories up, though. Now, I knew that during this injury, man, it was bad. I couldn't even hold a towel out like this. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't pick my arm up like this. It was fucked up. So I knew that um, it was going to be quite a while before I trained again, uh, if I could even come back to training without some kind of major surgery on the shoulder. Uh, but I wanted to keep the calories up because... I know that whatever I'm weighing, if I can stay around that weight, stay around there, right? Even if I lose muscle, which I'm going to do, I atrophy, which I'm going to do, but I gain fat enough to offset it so that my weight stays around the same neighborhood, that's going to prove useful when I resume training. Why? Because it's going to make it easier for me to come back. So see, if I'm off training and didn't do that, and I atrophy, and I lose a lot of weight, say I lose fucking 25 pounds or something, maybe more, who the hell knows, then uh, depending on how long it is, right, eight months, you know, long time, I don't know what I would lose, but let's say you lose a whole bunch, 
then when you go to come back, I don't know if that's a long enough period. I guess it depends how long you've been training, et cetera, et cetera. But your body will reset itself. So by the time if my body goes and resets itself and decides, okay, okay, you know, initially it starts to lose it. It doesn't like it. It panics. It's trying to cling to mass. doesn't care if it's fat. doesn't care if it's muscle. It just knows it's not normal. Well, given enough period, if you keep losing and then you stay down there like that, the body says, okay, okay, I give up, this is what I weigh now, and it resets itself. And once it does that, then it's going to be a little more difficult for you to regain it. You're still going to be able to do it easier than if you had never been there before, but it's going to be more difficult. Whereas, if you let your body fat come on up as the muscle's coming off, and uh, you're not worried about that part of it, then the weight, the body still weighs the same, it's easier after that eight months or however long it is in your situation, it's easier to exchange, you know, tissues composition-wise. It's easier for you to then shed some fat and gain some muscle to exchange. The body likes normalcy, and the body doesn't know mathematics. It doesn't know how many reps. It doesn't know how many pounds or how many kilos. It doesn't know, all oh, this is number 10 rep I'm supposed to grow now. It doesn't know any of this. All it knows is the extent of demand, you know, the stress, no stress, and it knows stress as far as the load that it carries around all the time. That's what it knows. It doesn't know weights and measures. It doesn't know percentages. It knows stress. That's what it knows. So, and it works the opposite. It works against you, too, of course. Um, you can make it work for you, but it works against you where, like, say you're overweight, you're carrying around more fat than you like, maybe you're carrying a lot of fat, you go to diet off the fat. Get the fat off. You lose a good bit, then you plateau, you can't get any more off, you start to be discouraged. I'm stuck, I haven't lost another pound, I'm stuck. No, oh, you're not stuck. Don't get discouraged. If you haven't gained any back, it doesn't matter, you haven't lost any more. If you're maintaining, you're still gaining ground. Your body will eventually reset itself and then accept that this is the new norm. And then it'll be easier to maintain that and come back around and, and drop more. But you have to be patient and understand that you're not, you're not, you're still making progress if you haven't gone backwards. All right? So that's why when people get discouraged on a diet, a lot of times, typical people, they will, uh, you know, they'll come off the diet, they'll gain all the weight back. They'll rebound. Well, the rebound works for you or against you. It all depends on, on your strategy. Right? If you take advantage of it, you can make it work for you as in this circumstance. So if you're injured or whatever and you're going to be off training for a while, my advice, take it for bad advice, take it for good advice, whatever. It varies person to person and how you look at it, I guess. Some people don't want to carry the body fat. You know, I don't blame you. I don't fault you either way. But if you're going to be off a long time or a good while, you're going to lose muscle. Face the fact. Without the stimulus, you're going to lose the muscle. Okay? Now, when I was off, because I know the way the shit works, I didn't even care how much protein I ate. I just had to eat to maintain weight. I knew I was going to gain body fat as I lost muscle. I knew I was going to make that exchange to keep my weight in the same vicinity, to make up for the muscle loss. Had to replace it with something. I don't have a lot of choices here, you know, so it's body fat. So I went ahead and took advantage of that and ate a lot of shit that I like to eat Ugh, that's not really good for me, not good for my physique, not good for the appearance of my physique. Because it was comfort food to me also. So I ate the ice cream, I ate whatever I wanted to eat, I ate pastas, I ate pizza, I ate whatever made me feel good. And then when uh, you know, when I came at the end of the eight months now, my weight's in a similar neighborhood. Yeah, I'm fatter. Uh, I'm not talking about getting really obese, but I'm fatter. Uh, but I'm also smaller muscularly. But then it's easier now for me to start to take off the fat, just, just getting active again, you're going to burn a little bit of fat. Switching that diet up, you're going to lose a little fat. Now I'm going to eat correctly, I'm going to feed the body the protein, cut them carbs down, uh, cut that fat back, and uh, go ahead and exchange some, some of the composition, exchange tissues, and it makes it easier for you to regain your muscle. It makes it easier. I'm not saying it makes it easy, it makes it easier, much easier. All right, so... That's my two cents on that. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, just let me know. I'll clarify. But um, it's not rocket science. I don't think it's that uh, earth-shattering. But to a lot of people, it may be something you never heard of before. 
But take your time to think about it before you give me a knee-jerk response and say, oh, that's bullshit. Take your time to think about it. It makes perfect sense. Okay? Uh, and that's all I got right now. Me and my buddy here, we're going to give you something to eat. I'm trying to trying to get him on the, on the eating train again so he can gain a little bit of size back himself. Unfortunately, he didn't follow my advice at all, and he just lost all of it. So he's got quite a ways to go now, but I'll keep you posted.